Hello, everyone. Welcome to Build for Informal Sector 2020 webinar. Um, thank you for attending this webinar on understanding the informal economy. Post COVID and beyond. So the beautiful informal hackathon, beautiful informal economy hackathon is still the registration is still on. You can um, the links will be shared on the on the chat. You can follow those links to join the Slack channel to register your teams, and also to see the hackathon guide. Yeah, um, why are we gathered here? We are gathered because of the hackathon on build for the informal sector. And um, this it's a very um, important hackathon for this critical time uh, because of the post COVID, because of the COVID. Um, um, why do we need to build for the informal sector during these times? And who, who, who are the organizers? So the, the aim of this webinar is to expose the informal economy and um, what it was before what it is now and how it's going to be like in the coming months and how we can build meaningful solutions that will help this sector using technology. Yeah. So Tecrity um, is, is hosting this um, webinar um, built for the informal sector. And um, this webinar is under our Build for Social Good program, which is, um, which is a part of um, the program run by Tecrity. And um, Tecrity is a non-profit social enterprise. So at Tecrity, we help to kickstart beginners in their tech careers by providing vital resources like data, laptop, and mentorship support for their journey to be a success. Also, we, pro we provide mentorship um, support through our mentorship program, which um, um, that matches some mentees to mentors which have specific skills that they are looking for. And um, the mentors will guide them throughout their journey, throughout their tech journey, and essentially to make their journey in tech a smooth one. And also at Techrity, we have the Build for Social Good Hackathon, which is, um, what, um, which is what the Build for Informal Sector Hackathon falls under. So the Build for Informal Sector Hackathon 2020 falls under the Build for Social Good Hackathon. And this hackathon is meant to uh, identify specific challenges for teams to build and to prefer solutions on on um, sustainable development goal problems. So every every um, hackathon will highlight these problems and see how technology can help in solving these problems, um, these sustainable um, development goal challenges. So that's what the Build for Informal Sector Hackathon is all about. So at Tecrity, we are all about engineering a community of givers for technology across Africa and beyond. Through So you can give through your time by mentoring somebody. You can give your money by donating to help a Kickstarter, access data, laptops, and mentorship support. And you can also build for social good by um, using it through your skills. So through your skills, you can um, also give your, um, give. So that's what Tecrity is all about, engineering a community of givers. So you can find out more about Tecrity on our website, tecrity.org. You can send us a message, hello at tecrity.org. And you can follow our social media channels at tecrity.org. So today, um, in this webinar, we, we are going to um, see, uh, understand the informal economy post-COVID and beyond. And our speaker for today is Joe Ajibade. Joe Ajibade. So Joe Ajibade is a social entrepreneur and dentist in training. He currently works alongside the management team of a Nigerian dental startup. Joe specializes in marketing and is responsible for content and lead management. Joe is inspired daily by new challenges and continuous learning. And in his free time, he likes to read crime stories and play hourly or chess. 
you can follow Joe Ajibade on his social media handles. Um, you can follow Joe Ajibade on Twitter at Joe Ajibade underscore Ajibade. In, on Instagram, uh, Joe underscore Ajibade. On Facebook, Joe Ajibade. And on LinkedIn, Joe Self Ajibade. So in a short while, we'll be listening to the speaker as he um, dissects the informal economy and hackathon participants is going to benefit very well from this um, webinar because they will, they will get information on how um, what they are building will help to um, mitigate the challenges this sector is having post covid so welcome Ajiba, joe ajibade thank you for coming yeah you have the stage now Thank you so much. Thank you very, very, I really appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. Um, <laughs> I'm a little scared. All right, let's go ahead. Um, you know, when Techrity reached out to me, I was, I was, I said something. I said, I didn't have to say this, but I, I, I saw the vision, the mission, what you're trying to do. and. It's just so interesting. We are still going to talk about this while we are talking. We are still going to get to the to the to the to the to the point where I'm going to use this as an example. What Techrity is doing for the informal economy. So we are going to get there. But um, for the next thirty minutes of our lives, uh, I just want us to uh, pay attention, and um, we'll be going through something very interesting. Something that many of us have been going through but maybe we've never paid so much attention to it because it's part of our everyday lives, right? And um, so it's the informal economy, understanding the informal economy. Uh, uh, please, can I have the slide displayed? Is it possible? All right, I think um, they're trying to help us to put the slide on. So the informal economy, uh, many of us, uh, we know more about the formal economy. I mean, you see a job advert online, anywhere, it could be LinkedIn, it could be Twitter. Uh, Twitter job adverts are always very funny. They will say something like, okay, so, 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 so is needed. And just like that, you know, you apply for it and you get it. If you if you saw it on the web, maybe on the web page, they are going to put job description and your qualifications. You know the qualifications they need. You know, uh, and they are going to say, okay, a minimum of um, five to six years experience, uh, minimum of uh, a degree in um, if it's a communications work, they're going to say minimum of a degree in mass communications, and. Uh, you apply for the job, then you start praying, okay, oh God, please let me get this job, let me get this job, let me get this job. Uh, that happens only in formal economy. That's why I said we are more used to formal economy. Uh, formal economy is what we are used to, but informal economy is perhaps what we are more used to than formal economy, but we might not know. Now, this is informal economy. Workers in the informal economy uh, is the street vendor you met this morning while walking on the road. They probably put something like bananas or maybe plantain or maybe uh, um, anything. It can be bottled water. It can be, it can be soda, soft drinks and anything. They put it on their head and you, maybe you're thirsty and you just say, okay, uh, give me, then you pay 100 Naira or 150 or whatever, then you get the drink for them. Those are workers in the informal, sector you just patronized a worker in the informal sector now the the the, the informal sector is a um, there is no regulation all right so there's no regulation uh they are not registered and um, they are not taxed they are not taxed uh I feel it is better we do a comparative uh, analysis so that we can understand, we can be able to differentiate formal 
an informal economy. Yeah. So, um, all right. This can we can we scroll down? Yeah. So I forgot to say this. Uh, this is the table of contents. You can see we are still in number one. We are trying to differentiate informal economy and formal economy. And uh, we talk about the global and uh, national situations, go through some very important statistics. And we'll talk about COVID-19. Yeah, the, the almighty COVID-19. Then we'll talk about the way forward. Then we'll note some things and uh, uh, we'll call it a day. So, uh, so this here is a very popular quote that has been uh, uh, permit me to use this word. Uh, <laughs> this quote has been bastardized a lot, and um, I am one of the culprits too. So, uh, Benjamin Franklin was the first person that gave this quote. He said, Debt and taxes are the only constant things in life. People die and we pay taxes. Uh, but over the years, uh, uh, you can, you can, you can, you can, you can add something to the quote. And as I have done here, I said, death taxes and the informal sector are the constant things in life. That's to show you just how important the informal sector is. It's a, it's a very, very, very important part of our life. As we'll soon see, uh, it's gonna be very interesting. So people working in the informal sector, you sometimes call them uh, gig workers, you know, street vendors, uh, you know, survivalists, yeah. And, um, the informal sector is also called uh, the shadow economy or gray economy. It's, it's a, the reason they call it a gray economy is because uh, it's very difficult to really, really describe. If you want to describe the informal sector in depth, you're really going to have a lot of data, a, a lot of minute data, a lot of little data, you know? And um, you know, people working in the informal sector also say they are working for cash. They're working for cash. Uh, the reason why they say they're working for cash, you're going to get to that. So, so the global economy, formal and informal. Uh, this is the worldwide informal employment. There's a very good chance that somebody you know, it might even be the person in front of your phone right now, <laughs> is working in the informal sector. I can bet it with my life. Yes, look at these statistics. 1.8 billion, 60% of employed people in the world are working in the informal sector. And believe me, a large percentage of these people are working in developing countries. They are in developing countries. We are soon gonna get to that. And uh, 1.2 billion people are working, just 40% are working in the formal sector. So we can see that. So uh, there's a table just after that. In that table, uh, the table summarizes the, the, the major differences between the formal sector and the informal sector. And I've gone through some of the differences. I'm still uh, uh, gonna go through them very quickly so that we can have a very good background of what we are, we are talking about. Um, the formal sector is where you fill in a job application. They call you for an interview. You know, it can be very rosy or it can be, uh, you know, the other way, then uh, that's the formal sector. You get paid, there's work benefits, insurance and all that, you know, compensations. They might pay you a 13th month, like some civil servants are expecting in December, you know, and there's a fixed duration for work. Oh, you know that, okay, eight to five, okay, nine to five, then five, you're going home and, and all that. That's the formal economy. Now we understand what the formal economy, we understand it more now. But the informal economy is, is, is you know, uh, th there's no employ employer to deal with. Probably you are your own employer in court, you know, cause you're working on whatever you get day, I mean, by day, you, you probably use maybe half of it to, to heat. Then, you know, savings is very difficult and, uh, and hold that, you know, working conditions are very bad uh, uh, and they are irregularly paid. You know, the only payment they get to do is when they verbally agree that, okay, I'm going to do this work for you and you're going to pay me 700 Naira, you're going to pay me 1,000, you're going to pay me 5,000 Naira if I do this work for you. That's the informal sector. The people that work in the informal sector, you can work anyhow you want. 
And one more thing, there is really no uh, organized uh, uh, forum to express your grievances. You know, if you're working in a company, you can, uh, you know, there's a customer care and they say, okay, this and this. It's nothing like that in the informal sector. It's just what it is. It's just the informal sector, pure and simple. It is not regulated and untaxed and untaxed. So um, if I'm working in the local market, for example, and um, when uh, trucks, maybe uh, uh, some of these trucks that carry uh, soft drinks, maybe Pepsi or Coke, and they come, and um, let's assume that they don't have people that, that are going to unload uh, 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 their packages for them. And you know, uh, they see me, they say, okay, uh, Joe, can you help us to do this? I say, okay, I'm going to help you to do this, but you're going to pay me uh, if I spend two hours, that means you're going to pay me uh, 10,000 Naira. And you know, they will say, okay, for what? They say, well, you have to pay me. Then we'll, then we'll start talking about them. We'll say, okay, we'll pay you uh, 5,000, we'll pay you this, okay. Then I help them to unload their cartons of uh, Coke or Pepsi. Then we put it in the warehouse, we store it, and they pay me my money. Hello, Joe. All right. Okay. Can you hear you now? All right. All right. So, so the slide, the next slide is just for laughs. You know, um, it's uh, showing a, a a a guy and a girl. Uh, the guy is an artist, and the guy is thinking. The guy is making a picture of her. Uh, the guy is busy drawing an uh, economic graph. You know, depicting the former economy. Uh, <laughs> It's very funny what goes through our head sometimes. Uh, so that's a, a, the next slide actually uh, shows another uh, depiction of what the formal sector is. You see this man at the door right now. Uh, he's attempting to get employed in the formal sector. You see the interviewer. The interviewer says <laughs> the guy should pick up the chair and arrange the chair and offer himself a seat. That's how tough it is to get. Uh, work in the formal sector sometimes, and that's what people face. You can you can easily assume that this guy, after leaving this place, is gonna be thinking of getting a gig because this is uh, really ridiculous. I mean, uh, make a chair and take a seat. So he's gonna be having to arrange all the little pieces. And so the the formal sector can be can be so organized that you know uh, it prevents easy entry, easy entry. So this guy, assuming. He closes the door right now. He's just gonna call his friend and say, "Ah, hello, uh, um, 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 Mike. I, I, I need a job." Then they're gonna arrange something for him. Then he's gonna be working in the informal sector. So uh, I think we understand what informal sector and formal sector is much more better now. And um, well, uh, the next couple of uh, pictures uh, they are just gonna remind us of um, situations where. Now these are informal workers. Now you're getting to see why they occupy such a large percentage in the global workforce. Now these are the kind of people that we have in our family. Traders, market people, when you go to the market, you buy stuff from informal workers all the time. Uh, uh, depending on where you live, they, they, they hawk stuff on the street and you know, uh, Maybe some of us have even done this before. You know, I have people very close to me that have done this before and they are very good friends of mine. And uh, uh, wherever I look, uh, I see informal workers everywhere, especially in this period of COVID-19 where there are students uh, 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 looking for gigs and how that, you know, you just uh, get work in a store or a shop, then you help them to sell stuff and, uh, you know, they just pay you maybe daily and how that. So this is an example. So uh, we can scroll down. So these are pictures, these are photos depicting people in the informal sector. Uh, this is gonna be reminding you of one time or the other when you patronized uh, stuffs from, uh, uh, uh. and you know what's funny? People actually, uh, we actually need the informal sector so much that, uh, <laughs> let me say this, we all know sometimes uh, guys, they wanna buy, they wanna look good without spending too much money. Then you go and buy Okirika or, you know, you go to uh, a market where things are very cheap, very, very cheap, you know, 
and you know instead of you to pay uh, you're going to be having to pay maybe like 20 percent of what you should pay normally so so these are very very uh perfect pictures depicting the informal workforce the informal workforce can scroll down you see uh these are uh face cards you know see this woman uh putting stuff on her head soft drinks and all that the the conductor there the conductor uh, they are all informal workers see see the woman selling um bottled water the women selling vegetables and and please let us take note of this picture because there is a stack it's going to be telling us something so far we have been seeing oh all right all right can you hear me better now is it much more loud now all right all right good uh, thank you for calling my attention to that. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Shows you're paying attention. So, uh, all right, all right, all right. So these are informal workers. Yeah, these are informal workers. You know, uh, okay. We can, we can, we can. Yeah, we can keep scrolling. Um, you know, these are the people that help us. They help us make our clothes. Uh, uh, and if uh, you make your own clothes yourself, you know, you're also in the informal sector. <laughs> so you know that. And um, okay, this is uh, during COVID-19. Uh, this person, this lady here just picked up uh, this. She's selling uh, um, sanitizers and uh, hand gloves and all that, still part of the informal sector. So quickly, uh, we are going to go to the second part, the global situation. Um, if you take a moment to look at this graph, uh, if you just uh, enlarge the graph on your screen, I mean on your screen, you can enlarge it. Uh, it shows the the percentage that the informal sector forms in the GDP of each continent. So this here is uh, Africa. This is Africa. Uh, you see, it's very close to forty percent. 40%, it was very close to 40% in uh, 1991 to 99. And um, 2010 to 17, you can see it's still around 30 plus in Africa. You look at uh, 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 developing countries in Latin America too, it's very high for them. Informal workers are very, very many in developing, informal workers are very, very many in developing economies. So that's why you see Latin America, you see uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, SSA in the front, you can, uh, go to the graph later. So it gives a brief overview of um, uh, the global picture of um, in developed economies, say the United States now, uh, you're not going to find, uh, uh, it, it takes like maybe 15% of their GDP. Yes, yeah, some country, even when they compute their GDP, don't include the informal sector. Can you see that? Like this is, this is a sector that forms a pivotal role of our own economy. Uh, a country like the United States, they might not include it there. They might not just include it there because it takes like less than fifty percent, fifteen percent of their of their GDP, and you know. So this uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, this gives a uh, a brief overview of the industries, the sectors where you have informal workers. Now, if you to be a formal sector, all we'll have to do is just look at the pie chart. Then we'll have okay, manufacturing industry. We'll have okay, fashion industry. We'll have retail. Then we'll have telecommunications on the pie chart, very neat and very simple, uh, very easy to grasp. But look at what we are having here. It's a long table, but it's so long, uh, you might be about to go through it. So this is because informal workers are everywhere, everywhere in every sector, doing all kinds of jobs, as long as uh, uh, keeps them uh, surviving. Uh, that's why they say informal workers, uh, that's why they say we work for cash sometimes. And they say an informal worker work, works for cash. This is what they mean because uh, most of the money they get, you know, they use it to uh, survive, you know, keep body and soul together. That's what they use most of the money to do. And savings is very difficult when you're in the informal economy because you're trying to keep your little uh, business or your little gig. And, you know, the money you're getting is so small, you can't even put anything into savings. and uh, you know, it's a, it's a very tough uh, sector, very, very tough sector. And um, 
this is what the informal sector looks like even before COVID-19 arrived. And um, imagine if the informal sector was like this before COVID-19, then COVID-19 comes in. Uh, uh, the informal, you can go through these uh, figures later on, perhaps after the um, um, presentation. It's going to show you uh, in figures uh, how much the informal sector, how much stake they have in our GDP. I mean, Nigeria specifically, how much stake they have in our GDP. Yeah, this, let's, let's do the next um, slide. Um, so, so here is, um, you can enlarge this picture to see uh, it's talking about African countries and how much the informal sector takes in the GDP. You see that blue uh, uh, line at the bottom, that's Nigeria for you. That's Nigeria for you. Um, it's above 50%. Uh, this is 2019 data, I think. Uh, it's above 50%, 50 in Nigeria. Uh, uh, it's above 50%. Uh, uh, over over GDP over GDP and um, so uh, let's quickly talk about COVID. Uh, we've spent some time talking, trying to understand uh, the informal economy and the formal economy. So this picture here is a picture of an empty market. If you look at the market, the market is empty. It's empty, and um, this is what happened when curfews were, were being enforced when COVID-19 came in. Uh, imagine someone working in the informal sector. Say I am a tailor right now and um, I have a shop. Uh, I'm not regulated. Uh, I am not taxed. And um, I didn't register my company nowhere. I didn't go to CSC. I didn't, no, I didn't do all of that. I just have my shop and COVID-19 happened. And because people were not going to o and bears, they were not going to parties and all that. Uh, they stop bringing me clothes when they when 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 there is a coffee some of these people might not even come out at all so even if they have clothes to give me they might have to tell me that i'll be the one to come and get the clothes in their house in their house then even if we get all that sorted we might still be dragging payments i'll be dragging payments and you know things are a little bit messed so this is um this market here is what things look like when uh restrictions were still in place, uh, things were, 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 were very empty. Of course, you see that man there is a very stubborn man. He's probably going to get fined. And uh, in addition to losing his business, he's going to be losing money too because uh, uh, he's breaking the law. But um, that's what COVID-19, that's what COVID-19 caused. And um, let me just uh, give us uh, uh, a little more explanation about um, uh, many people stopped working due to COVID-19. Yeah, uh, 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 as many as 45% uh, of people uh, stopped working in Nigeria, in Nigeria. But the percentage might be much more lower in more developed economies. And, uh, uh, but the informal sector has taken a big hit from the COVID-19 crisis. It's taken a big hit. You know, governments demanded, okay, uh, these informal workers, even if they have to work, uh, they have to take very costly protective measures. They have to uh, purchase masks. They have to, uh, you know, if it were to be an Okada man, Okada man. Now, this is a good point to say this. Uh, between formality and informality, there's actually a line in between, yeah, where you say there is a certain degree of formality and there's a certain degree of informality. Some uh, businesses like um, Okada men, they are regulated to an extent. And if they have forums, if they have forums where uh, 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 the Okada men and uh, uh, motorcyclists, you know, where they regulate, where they pay a certain amount to, uh, you can say that they are regulated in that case to an extent, to an extent, to an extent. So they have some degree of formality formality but you agree with me that even in our country here and some maybe in some other parts of the world um, you will still find a lot of people uh, who just uh, we just pick up their bike in the morning and say okay I, I want to go into onto the street I want to make some money I want to carry some passengers and uh, you know all they need is probably their helmet they put their helmet on and they uh, jump on the streets and 
and and and and that's all. So um, their business is partly regulated. So um, so COVID nineteen. You take this case as an example. Uh, Somebody is running a small market at maybe um, um, uh, um, machine, and uh, you know if they 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 got hit by COVID nineteen, and um, uh, you know they are starting to lose customers, demand for products are decreasing, and all that. You know uh, they can't even expand. The business is contracting. They can't expand the business at that time. They are spending a lot of money, and they are not making much in return. And um, you know. Uh, it's going to be very difficult, especially if these people have families. It's going to be very, 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 very difficult. And this is the situation: market people, street vendors, you know, uh, tradesmen, maybe uh, informal construction workers, you know, two uh, K at the site, you know, kind of situation. You understand what I'm saying, right? Like uh, Malosi site, Amalobat. Sorry if I'm, I'm speaking Yoruba. Sorry. <laughs> so uh, it's going to hit them uh, so much so much so much but this is the situation where millions of nigeria found themselves when uh government placed policies to 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 enforce restrictions and um uh, it was a very difficult time i can remember that time you know i walk on the streets it's so quiet nothing is happening i want to buy fruits i want to buy this i can't get anything and and, and it was it was so 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 uh difficult uh so uh, way forward uh post-COVID and beyond. Now, this is the interesting aspect. It's going to be very interesting. Uh, you'll enjoy this very much better. So we're going to be talking about the challenges people face in the informal sector. And alongside it, we're going to be talking about some of the, some of the solutions that can be embarked upon, like a solution plan. So this is what we're going to be doing in this part. And um, uh, so, Informal, people working in the informal sectors, informal workers, uh, the number one thing that they need, this is a very big problem, is increased access to financial services. Informal sector workers need increased access to a lot of things, as we'll soon discover. Hmm? But this is a very big problem because uh, money is, like uh, they hear in business, like, you know, a business has to uh, breathe in money to, to be alive. They, they might probably not be, uh, you know, breathing for a living. But all I'm saying is money is very important. Cash flow is very important. And it is also very important for informal workers. Now, informal workers before COVID-19 didn't enjoy the best in terms of uh, lending facilities and uh, financial services. But now when COVID-19 hit, it took a turn for the worse. It took a worse turn. It took a worse turn. Because uh, if you're gonna borrow somebody some money to enlarge uh, their three-man business, their micro business, you at least want to see them face-to-face. -face. But there's a curfew. Oh, I'm, I, I, if I'm going to be giving you, uh, even if it's uh, 30,000, okay, I want to see you. Okay, let's sit down at the table. Let's talk about it. When will you? I want to be sure you're not going to default on this micro loan. I want to be sure, okay, you're not going to, uh, you're going to pay my money back. But this is a coffee. I can't see you, we can't meet face-to-face. Uh, 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 -face, so I would have loved to. And that's a very big problem. But even if, even if we can meet, even if we can meet, uh, I'm not willing to lend you money in this time because business is bad. I, I, why would I lend you money? Business is bad. So I'm not lending you money during the COVID period. Uh, okay, okay. So it's a very difficult thing, and um, um, some of the solutions to to some of the solutions and all of these solutions uh, 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 they are in the form of policies, and they are related to technology. And um, this one, this one is uh, maybe we know this. Many of us know this. Well, maybe we, we've listened to uh, um, Brimo's song, Alajo Somolu. I don't know how many of us have listened to that song, Alajo Somolu. And um, some of the ways that informal workers tend to survive is using uh, uh, tone things. Tone things are Alajos. Yeah. So, tone things, you know, they ride on the motorcycle, they have a small office, and informal workers, you know, if they make a profit of maybe 3,000 in a day, 
they take 1,000, they give it to tone teams. And, you know, at the end of the month, if 50 people are together in heat, one person takes all the uh, uh, accumulation, you know, the next month, that's uh, maybe February, uh, the other person, the next person takes all the accumulation. The third month, they, the next person takes all the accumulation and all that. But uh, so far, tone teams have been used very traditional. We have still not developed that system uh, at all, at all, at all. Now, thinking of a situation where we have uh, a digital management system uh, for tone teams, and you have people putting their money, uh, and it's accessible uh, uh, in a mobile manner, and at the end of uh, maybe uh, a month or maybe two weeks, one member of the group gets the money and they use it to finance their micro uh, business uh, or the micro enterprise. And, um, you know, it, it, it's something uh, that's going to be very, very good for people working in the informal sector because it's going to provide the micro loan that they, that they so much need to probably expand their business and transit into, into, into the formal economy. But uh, uh, things are, are being used uh, in very traditional ways, very, very traditional ways. You see, uh, they, sometimes they bring their books out, they write all the names on their books. When I was much more younger, that's what they used to do. They have a very big ledger. They impute all the names of, uh, of the people uh, participating in the taunting business. And you know, if it is 30 persons, okay, they start doing it two, two weeks or one month. Every, I mean, a single group member takes all the money after one month. What if you have a very large database, a very, very large database that is market specific, you know, and we have people uh, imputing, I mean, getting to enroll in the taunting business and, you know, uh, turn by turn, they know, okay, I'm going to get all the money this month. I'm going to get all the money this month. And, you know, it's going to be very interesting, right? But um, we need a very secure database. We need a very secure database. Uh, we need people that are going to come up with very, very uh, uh, secure and trustable application programs. Because uh, am I going to show you not another Ponzi scheme, right? Am I going to be show you not another Ponzi scheme? You don't want to dupe me of my uh, money. Am I going to be sure, okay, when is my time to take all the money in this taunting business? I'm going to get it. So we need a very good database system. Uh, we need very good application programs to do that. Another one is, um, you know, government agencies helping out. We know BOHI. Uh, Bank of Industries, a government agency here in Nigeria. And, um, they have been trying to help businesses, uh, micro businesses, and uh, people working in the informal sector. Micro businesses, uh, you know, we, 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 we know them. Micro enterprises, they have, um, they generate very, very small revenue. They are not regulated if they are in the informal sector. They are micro businesses in the formal sector also, but if they are in the informal sector, they are not regulated and they are not taxed. And they, they have maybe between just one to five persons in employment. So uh, for these people to get uh, micro loans, you know, sometimes the bank, bank of industry, they, they, they get to, uh, you know, uh, give loans to, to, to people. And, um, um, but how many people working in the informal sector even knows that the bank, bank of industry exists here in Nigeria? So that's another problem. That's another problem. Uh, the digital divide is a very big problem because, uh, for example, if you are not on Twitter, and, you know, and if I'm working in the informal sector, there's a very good chance by the time I come back home in the evening, I'm probably too tired to get on Twitter to get to where the information is, even if I have the means, the resources from the money I'm making to, 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 to get on these sites, to get on these platforms. So it's it's a very um, it's a very big uh, uh, but the bank of industry they they give uh, micro credits and uh, they give uh, they do intervention. Let me move very quickly. I think um, um, so. That's it about increased um, access to financial institutions. Uh, uh, there's no way we are going to be able to talk about. Uh, I want you to know that there is no way we're going to be able to talk about everything the informal sector is uh, within 30 minutes. But I hope this is going to give us uh, uh, a, a solid background or an overview that will make us more interested in the informal sector because that is where most of our people are. And there's a good chance you have worked in the informal sector at one point or the other. 
even though you might not be working there right now, I have worked in the informal sector before, and um, I'm very proud of it because uh, uh, the informal sector is the soul of our GDP. It's the soul of our GDP. It's what uh, it is where majority of Nigerians are working, are working, and it's not only in Nigeria. It's in uh, most of our uh, developing countries, developing economy, especially in uh, Africa and uh, South America and um, some parts of the uh, maybe Asia. So uh, let me quickly talk about digital identity management. Um, we all know about um, um, national identity numbers and, and how that, but something interesting has been happening of late where uh, some service providers are gonna say, okay, we are not accepting and in high hand uh, as a valid means of identification. It's, it's very, very, very funny, right? In fact, there was a case and I think, um, um, let me see. Um, I think um, in the north of uh, a situation where someone wanted to do something as simple as a SIM replacement, a SIM replacement, and he was rejected. The 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 hen high hen was 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 rejected. It was very funny, very very funny. Uh, uh, if it were to be, uh, if we were to do a comparative analysis of a of a of a of a country like the USA, where they have uh, a very secured means of identification in their social security numbers. Almost everybody has social security numbers and no matter where you are, all they need to do is to press in your social security number and the system is so secured and so reliable that all your details, your photo, your digital, your, your photo and your details, your address, everything is gonna come home. Your, your, your... It's so simple there, but here, uh, the, the statistics we have, it, it, it's, it's very, 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 very bad. Uh, it's, um, it's, it's, it's even BV hen about, this country has 200 million persons roughly, but even BV hen, uh, we have about 40 million persons that, 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 that go and road for uh, uh, bank verification numbers. And believe me, most of these persons, including myself, are working in the formal economy. So how can we create uh, a system where uh, people working in the formal sector, people working in the informal sector, uh, are gonna feel happy to enroll? A system where uh, 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 people working in the informal sector are gonna be able to enter their details and uh, uh, when micro loans are going to be provided for them, uh, their means of identity can easily be accessed. In fact, they don't need to see representatives from uh, the micro loan agency or the micro loan uh, social enterprise. They just, okay, give me your uh, uh, number. Okay, I, I look it up. Okay, you or oh, this and this and this. Okay, fine. Okay, this. Then we get to provide you the micro loan. But even the systems we have, for example, the means of uh, 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 identification like uh, NIHN or BVHN, we have a very, very minute fraction of Nigeria, it's still very minute fraction of Nigerians that have enrolled. And even in that fraction, most of the people are formal workers. They are, they are members of the formal workforce. You can see we have a very, very, very uh, big need for a digital, identity management, something that is very reliable and that is easily accessible for people because that's the problem. Uh, uh, some of these, uh, the, the, the time I had wrote for my NIN, I had to go there like, uh, I think uh, uh, three times and they gave me the temporary one, the temporary slip and I had to go back to get my identity card. Believe me, who's gonna leave their, their stall and their market, you know, when uh, they know that customers are gonna be coming and they need the money badly, to go and be sitting down three days, getting their uh, uh, um, NIM. You know, some people would do it if they want to get a loan. Maybe they need to get a loan, a micro loan or something. It's gonna be, it's gonna force them to do it. But if that is not the situation, you know, you might not just be motivated to do it. You know, maybe if you they request it at the bank, you say, okay, okay, I'm going to, you know, something like that. So we need a very much uh, better digital identity management and. Um, that's also something we can uh, do better. In uh, uh, that's something we can we can work on in, with technology, and uh, that's why I'm very happy with uh, the this hackathon. You can 
we can we can we can we can look at the bigger problems that we have and uh, think of ways we can solve them and think of ways we can solve them we need uh, a dhi hand digital identity management we need it badly a very very reliable secured and easily accessible one we need it in this country so um, so that's it so let me just quickly talk about um, this and we'll call it um, a day uh, a civil society yes we can talk about the informal economy without talking about the civil society you know uh, there's a popular maxim that says uh, uh, civil society is the, is the conscience of uh, of uh, um, a whole community you know you have uh, formal businesses as it were and you have um, the informal sector as it were you know the civil society is just like in between and uh, 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 they say if the civil society is corrupt <laughs> then uh, the whole society is corrupt so in civil society sometimes you have social enterprises in civil societies you might have social enterprises in formal economies also but sometimes you you find them more i think in uh, um, civil societies and uh, especially now the social enterprises are getting to become popular equity here is a social enterprise and it's so good to see what equity is doing uh, 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 with respect to technology and uh, creating awareness about problems that we have so uh, so people working in the informal sector for example if hi I'm working as um, a tailor, a tailor. Then I have my little shop, unregulated, untaxed, and unregistered. Then, um, but I need to buy two more machines. Maybe I'm expecting more uh, apprentices, so I need to get two more machines. But, uh, uh, but uh, business is not moving up, moving very well, and I'm, I don't have money. So, uh, for example, if I get in contact with uh, representatives from Bank, Bank of Industry Nigeria, and I say, okay, I need a microcredit, and um, you know, uh, they might, they might, they might, I might just be one of the few people on the queue. You know, think about it. You know, many people in the in the informal sector, if there is a micro loan or a micro credit uh, program. You know, people are going to rush there, provided there is good awareness. But if I'm one of the people on the queue and in nine months, I don't get the money, I don't get no money. And that that's to be expected because it depends on how efficient and how effective the system is. If the system is not very effective. You can be on the queue for so long, for so long. But let's think about it another way. Let's say there is a social enterprise and they give micro loan. Many of us will know Grameen, Grameen Bank, Grameen, Grameen, uh, Mohamed Yunus actually did a very fine job with Grameen Bank. He, he did such a fine job that uh, some people refer to him as the father of uh, um, modern social entrepreneurship. And what Grameen did was uh, they they provided micro loans for people, for people, uh, and uh, they organized it in such a way that uh, the default rate was was so 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 low. They were able to recover back most of their loans, most of their loans, and um, if we have social enterprises, non-profits, organizations in uh, the uh, civic society, you know, providing micro loans to people, to, to uh, informal workers, you know, I can, for example, I can get to buy two more machines, you know, increase the number of apprentices with me, and um, I can get to uh, increase my revenue. We can, cash flow will be, will be much more, better. you know, people will, I'll get more customers and business will, will flow. But um, the, the, the social enterprise sector uh, in this country uh, is still very much developing. But thank goodness for uh, organizations here like Equity. And um, I believe things are going to get better. But we need partnership. We need social enterprises to partner with, um, with informal workers. And the last one is, um, is one we are very, very aware with, I mean, of also. He talks about insurance, insurance. We need insurance. A couple of days ago, uh, I heard of a popular market that got burned by fire. It was a very serious issue. You know, millions of Naira, you know, wasted in fire. You know, and uh, some of these people, some of the uh, informal workers at the market, maybe they just have their little shop there. And uh, uh, 
all their uh, product it, it got burned. It's, 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 a, it's a very big problem. A very, very big, big. Some people don't even know where to start their lives. Like everything they have is gone. They don't know where else, what else to do. So it's a very big problem. So um, insurance is a big problem. And um, even the formal sector is finding it very difficult to find an efficient, uh, a reliable insurance scheme. Uh, but how much more the informal sector? But we still have to hope things are going to get better, right? Uh, at least we have the NHIS. If the NHIS uh, uh, enrolls more informal people and their database is more efficient, more uh, reliable, and more secure, then we can be thinking of a more happy future for uh, informal workers. The NHIS is just an example because if informal workers uh, uh, get to be enrolled, in NHIS, you know, they don't have to, they can take care of themselves better. You don't have to say, okay, I'm sick, I can't go to work today, I can't uh, go to shop today, I can't go and make a few uh, these things. So we need, we, need, we need insurance coverage for informal workers also, informal workers also. And there are many different ways we can go about that. Uh, it depends on, um, uh, but a very big problem is still everything we discuss uh, these problems are multi-dimensional because you're going to notice all these problems are going to be taking us back to having a secure database system. And this is what technology can help to solve. Because if something is going to be uh, 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 minimally regulated at least, uh, there has to be a very, very secure and very, very accessible database system. Otherwise, you won't find informal workers there. All you find there is formal workers. So we, 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 I think it's a challenge for us to, you know, come up with technology, uh, uh, easily accessible application programs and database systems, uh, uh, in which the management and the, you know, uh, the, 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 the implementation system is uh, easy for informal sectors. I find it very easy to leave my my shop or my work and I, I find it very easy to you know to to take advantage of this database system because it, it's gonna be it's gonna be a very 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 big solution if that gets to be solved things like payment you know transactions you know uh, it's gonna be very very easy because you know once I confirm your identity uh, on your mobile you can get to transfer you can get to transfer, you know, uh, we can get to, we can get to transact easily, you know, using mobile money, you know, or something and it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna solve a lot of problems. So all of these problems, they, 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 they still draw us back to having uh, um, um, a good uh, digital uh, uh, identity management, because uh, um, if we can succeed in that, we're gonna succeed in many other areas, because it will be very easy to uh, 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 say to 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 identify all our informal workers, their small businesses, and be very easy to provide loans to transact businesses. To you know, you might not even need to pay me cash. If I help you carry a couple of um, crates, you just transfer the money to me, and you know I'm happy. And and by the way, paying me cash might not be to my advantage because if you pay me cash, I find it more difficult to save money. You know, I, if if I don't have uh, maybe a very good um, 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 process to save money. If you give me, okay, if I'm an here. <laughs> I help you do a little job and give me the money. I'm grateful. You no, know, I just spent. Hi, Joe. Time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the time yeah, is you've been talking, you've been talking for so long. Um, All right. Let's stop here and All take right. some questions. Um, please, if you have questions, you can unmute your mic and speak, or you type your questions in the chat. I believe we have um, um, hackathon participants and uh, attendees, and, uh, attendees of these webinars have been exposed to exposed to the various um, um, challenges that's um, hindering this economy, this informal economy, and the way um, the various ways that technology can solve is identity management, the speaker said digital identity management, access to credit, cooperatives and stuff and stuff. So I believe this webinar was way helpful for us. And um, from now on, we know what to build. We have ideas for what we can build. 
we have um, ideas for how um, um, our solutions can help this um, economy, this sector. So please, if you have questions, um, a minute, we'll give a minute for questions. If you have questions, please unmute your mic and ask. Hello? Yeah. While yeah. we're waiting for can questions, I... um, please. Okay, okay, please. Please go ahead, go ahead, please. I think his network is bad. So, while we're waiting for this question to come up, um, let's endeavor to share this webinar across our handles. Tag um, the speaker on the, um, at Joe underscore Ajibade on his Twitter, Facebook Joe Ajibade on Instagram Joe at, on, at Joe underscore Ajibade on LinkedIn Joe Ajibade and um, also tag at Techrity Org on all the social media handles and also this video will be posted to our YouTube channel like you can always check it out and um, come back to refresh your memory and see the challenges and also the feed for be on our Slack channel, events, webinars and workshops channel. Please, you can look at it and understand more on why you need to build for this sector. I'm, I'm not done. Hello, are you ready now. for your, to ask your question? Yeah, yeah. Miracle? Yeah. yeah okay, yeah. Miracle, okay. All right, all right. Thank you for, thank you for the class. I joined, I joined lately, but I was able to pick one or two things. I actually want to ask ask from what what I I actually um, which I got. All right, um, can can you hear me, sir? Yes, please, please go ahead, sir. I can, I can. All right, Saju, thank you very much. God bless you. Please, I I actually want to know because I I believe from the western um side, you know, let's take for instance U.S. or the, or maybe you know the western side and um, part of this um, world let's take for instance us as a model you know they have a better database obviously system than us right now what do we think that we can actually you know get it um running at 100 percent you know do you, do you think do you think that because we have to consider also maybe the rural areas they are still part of Nigeria. Apart from the, uh, what is it called? The informal sector in urban areas too. We also co capture the rural areas, right? You understand? And you know, in a country like Nigeria, where security too is a problem, trying to gather data and all that. Security challenges too in some areas in our country. So how, how, do, we, how do we put all these things together? And, is it feasible, really feasible or that this thing can actually work and be optimal at 100% level? You know, uh, if it's possible, is it what kind of approach? What kind of approach are we going to adopt? Comparing our standard with your standard, I, I believe the ASDAS yes, is close to 100%. So uh, that's my question, please. Thank you, sir. Um, well, thank you very, very much. Thank you very much for. Uh, uh, this is very, very good question. I really appreciate it. And uh, I believe we are all going to, um, to learn a lot from this question. Uh, well, looking at um, um, the situation in advanced, I mean, more developed countries, uh, the database system is um, uh, much more reliable and far easily accessible. I think those two things are, 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 are things that are very much needed for any database system. If uh, we use uh, technology to create something, I think um, uh, the accessibility and the reliability, because most of these things are gonna be taking place uh, in the web, in the cloud, and the accessibility of these things are very, very important. So they have a very, very secure database and it is easily accessible. Those are two big advantages. But they were able to do this 
because they also have policies that guarantee a very, very safe environment. Nigeria is not, um, I don't have the data here, but the uh, ease of doing business for everyone, even uh, looking at the former economy and informal economy, it's not so good here. Why is it not so good? Because we have many external problems, even outside of business. We have, uh, just like you mentioned, we have uh, security problems. Uh, uh, people are afraid. We just finished uh, Hensars, you know, it's still not finished. We just resuscitated it, you know, just uh, I think uh, uh, two days ago, Hensars was uh, resuscitated. And uh, this is a very big problem, a very, very big problem because everything, I was talking with somebody yesterday and we were getting to talk around uh, the situation in our country. And we came to this to the point where we said, you know, we agreed that things have to change from top down, from top down. If you look at even former workers in this country, you know, uh, um, um, for example, maybe, uh, uh, um, um, let's say as a case example, and I think um, a very good example is um, Nasu workers. If you look at them, they're striking every day. Asu is striking right now. There's a very big problem in the formal sector. That's to show you how complex a situation is here, but it's not beyond remedy, but it's complex. Yeah. So people in the formal economy are having a lot of problems. Now, if people in the formal economy are having a lot of problems, how much more informal workers how much more informal workers? So I believe uh, there is a solution and it has to be top down, yeah, like a top down approach solution. And what I mean by top is our policies, our governmental policies have to be redefined and redesigned and implemented differently. We have to be able to guarantee safety and security of people before things, so that things can get better so that things can get better. We have to, 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 to work on ease of doing business in this country. It's going to not only affect the formal economy, but also the informal economy also. Um, there's actually a, a, a little turn here because most informal economies, uh, when informal uh, 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 businesses, maybe uh, uh, SMEs, when they get microcredits, you know, and you know, they, get, uh, they want to expand, they, they, they transition to former economies. So one of the signs of uh, uh, development or improvement uh, is that when things are better, when there is security, when we have uh, uh, good policies, when our, our, our representatives and uh, our senators at the um, legislative levels, when they pass legislations that protect informal workers, legislations that make it easy to do business for both former and informal workers, when they, when, they, when they enforce all of these solutions, all of these things, it's gonna go from top to down. People working in the formal sector and informal sector are gonna feel the effect. And we're gonna see people transiting from the informal sector to the formal sector because they are going to want to get their uh, businesses registered. They're going to, uh, if the tax uh, system is um, 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 enticing, they're going to want to register their businesses. They want to, uh, you know, pay tax, provided the benefits they will get from it is, uh, um, 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 is comparable and, and all of that. But to answer your question uh, and to just uh, say it in, two, in one or two statements, uh, I think a top-down approach will help us. And this is what I mean by a top-down approach from the government, the three tiers of government, the executive, the legislative and the judiciary. When things start working, when we pass, when we make good policies, our academics, uh, they help us make good policies and uh, the people at the top tier of government, they enforce, they pass these bills, uh, the executive side, you know, they, 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 they sign the bills into action and people and the agencies, government agencies get to, you know, act on these uh, bills and they reach out to people both in the informal and informal sector. When we have no police brutality, you know, uh, the police, um, and we have all of those things in place, the, the informal sector is gonna feel the change as much as the formal sector. So I believe in a, I believe a top tier approach uh, will help us. I believe we have to look at policies and the government. Okay, thank you very much, Joe. Um, 
the I believe while we are waiting for the top down change, um, um, technology can go uh, faster to to help uh, mitigate these challenges um, um, before the top down change comes, hopefully. And um, yeah, do uh, does anyone have any other uh, question? Does anyone else have any other question? We are far behind time. Please unmute your mic and speak. Okay, it's 10 minutes past 4 p.m. and um, our speaker has been talking for approximate for almost an hour. And so I would like to appreciate you, Joe Ajibadi, for coming on to speak uh, um, on this topic, a very broad topic, but you managed to explain um, most of um, what this um, economy is facing and how we can go about solving these challenges. And uh, these challenges, this topic, um, understanding the informal economy post-COVID and beyond is tied to the Sustainable Development Goal 9. So if you look at the Sustainable Development Goal 9, you see the um, innovation, infrastructures and all. And um, that's what Tecrity is looking to um, build these solutions that will help these um, various Sustainable Development Goals to um, come to a, a, a reality. And we as Techies have a role to play in um, building for social good. So um, this platform, Tecrity, will help you to um, use your skills for social good. Thank you, Joe Ajibade. Thank you, uh, attendees of so this webinar. Well, yeah. Thank you so much for having Thank me. you. I hope next time when we call on you, you are also um, <laughs> obliged. <laughs> Thank you. With, with all okay. pleasure. With all pleasure. Thank with you. all pleasure. Thank you. With all pleasure. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Hackathon, you the everyone. Hackathon registration is still on. Please join the Slack channel. You can, uh, um, from this webinar, I believe you have ideas you can, uh, you want to build on um, within this um, hackathon um, period. Please join the Slack channel, register for the hackathon, organize your teams, and yeah, let's build for the informal sector. The webinar has come to an end. Thank you everyone for attending. Thank you to, to the speaker, to the organizers of this event. We appreciate you all. Bye. Bye everyone. Bye everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Bye.